Hello everyone and welcome back to the garden. Here I am. This is becoming an obligatory thing, I guess. Anyway, uh, today I'm going to be dividing my daffodils and transplanting them. I'm starting out in this uh, small garden, the old garden, and wow, I'd already forgotten how small this space is. It's incredibly tiny compared to the other garden. Um, but as you can see, uh, Falls here, frost here, freeze here, uh, everything has died back. It's pretty much just brown and there's a lot of stuff that I need to dig up. Today I'm going to be digging up the daffodils. Um, I planted about 2,300 daffodils in this garden over the past three years. And as you'll be able to see in this video, they have easily tripled that. Uh, I was digging these daffodil bulbs for nine hours in total. And... It's just so many of them. I didn't even get them all. I tried my best to get as many as possible, but I couldn't even get them all. So to get right on into this, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a shovel and I'm going to start digging around where I think the bulbs might be. Now, of course, this is not an exact science and the first couple of scoopfuls, I definitely sliced right through a couple of them and have uh, discarded all the ones that I sliced through simply because they're a true bulb. If it was only minor damage, I went ahead and kept them separate to let them kind of scab over and uh, I'll be able to replant them. And they might not bloom next year, but I think they should recover. Uh, but I'm just digging, digging in my lines of daffodils. There's not much to explain in this part of the video. Uh, as you can see, some of them are a lot more shallow than others and some of them are a lot deeper. In general, I tend to plant my daffodils pretty shallow, about two inches deep, but some of these worked themselves way down to about eight inches deep, which was really surprising for me. Um, some of these, I was digging really far to get them, and I think a lot of it had to do with moisture levels. Interestingly enough, the places in the garden that were the wettest were also the places where the bulbs had worked themselves down deepest into the soil. And I think that may have been responsible for a couple of the varieties failure to bloom last season. So that was actually a really interesting discovery. Even though they were able to grow, they had kind of worked their way further down. So I thought that was uh, pretty interesting. Also in this video, you'll see that different varieties are at varying stages of growth here in the yard. Ideally, uh, I'm doing this here in December. Ideally, I would have gotten this done back in October or maybe even sooner, September before these bulbs had started to kind of set new growth for the season. You can see each of the bulbs that I pull out have a little bit of leaf growth already coming out of the top. One specific variety was pretty much already growing. I don't know why it was doing this. You can see the leaves are well above the ground. I don't know what they're doing. And actually when I pulled them, uh, dug them and put them into a tray to transplant later, I went ahead and I just kept all that foliage Ideally, I wanted to plant these immediately, um, you know, within a day or two of them getting dug. I don't want to allow them to dry out. Uh, I'm sure you could allow them to dry out or store them in like a cooler if you needed to, but personally, I don't have any experience with that at all. So um, I don't know about, you know, that whole process. I'm sorry, but I wanted to get these back into the ground as soon as possible since they did already have. Uh, those bits of growth going on. If they hadn't started growing yet, I think I would have been fine to, you know, store them like regular, you know, daffodil bulbs that you receive in the mail when you order new bulbs, but I just didn't feel comfortable with that. So uh, when I pulled these out of the ground, here's what most of them looked like. Most of them had grown to form clusters. Uh, this variety specifically is apricot whirl, and uh, it seemed to be one of the uh, most prolific producers of these little side offshoot bulbs, which I'm glad because I love apricot whirl. It's gorgeous. Anyway, you can see the general growth habit, what happens um, after a season. These apricot whirl bulbs had been in for one season only, which is actually remarkable to me that they look like this already. I planted one bulb at a time. So each clump that you see, each cluster went in last season as one bulb. And over the course of the summer and this fall, what we had, we have these new little bulb offshoots develop around the center bulb. Now, when you get a cluster of bulbs, you kind of have a choice to make. 
dividing them will depend upon their kind of maturity, I guess. Uh, sometimes when you get flower bulbs, you see that they are kind of too stuck together. And you give them a wiggle and they're real tight. The joint is real tight and you can't really separate them. It feels like you might break them if you separated them. And the same generally applies for dividing your own daffodil bulbs. At least that's what I've found here uh, in this experience. When I wiggle these bulbs apart, if they come apart readily, um, they're ready to be divided. A lot of times a new kind of paper sheath will have formed between the two bulbs and it takes nothing more than just giving it a gentle wiggle and the roots come apart and they divide super easy. In the case of these apricot whirl, uh, some of these little clumps looked kind of creepy. Some of them looked like monster teeth. I ended up with trays that looked like they were full of monster teeth or something. It was spooky. I don't know. I'm just being weird. But um, if you give it a wiggle and it feels tight and snug, I don't personally separate them. I think you can technically probably separate them in most cases. Uh, but you do risk doing damage to both the, the bigger bulb and the smaller bulb. You do risk doing damage to those when you break them off. So I generally just don't do that. I figure, um, you know, nature knows when it wants me to divide this bulb. I'm just going to trust the process. Even still, just doing it this way, I ended up with thousands of extra bulbs. It was absolutely incredible. Like, I, I mean, I knew that the daffodils would be, you know, multiplying in the ground, but I never expected this in a million years for them to multiply so well in such a quick period of time. And of course, it is important to note, even though these are dividing really easily and really well, uh, a lot of these may not be big enough yet to produce their own flower, so that's not a big deal. Maybe they will in time after I plant them. So the first year after this division, uh, those little tiny bulb offshoots, they might not produce a flower, but they might also. You know, this is the first time I've really done it, uh, a division this in-depth. So really, uh, it'll be interesting to see when these finally do begin to grow next year. And we can take some footage of that and I'll show you all how it went. But hopefully all will go well and we'll have an absolutely beautiful display. This is one of the reasons that I love daffodils so incredibly much is that you make a little investment and before you know it, um, they come back every single year and before you know it, you just have tons of flowers in the spring. You're just swimming in a sea and it's beautiful and it's wonderful. Something also to note that the size of the bulbs will vary depending upon the type. Uh, so, you know, smaller tazettas and things and little Jean quills, a lot of times they're a lot smaller. And of course, bigger ones like Sailor Man and uh, I think British Gamble's also pretty big, I want to say, are going to be huge. Uh, it seems to me that the bigger ones don't multiply as readily as some of the smaller types, but, you know, that's all right. They're still big and beautiful, so I ain't going to complain there. Um, when I dug these, I just went ahead and made sure to knock off as much excess soil as possible. That was a little bit difficult because it was very cold and very, very muddy while I was digging these things. Once I had all of these flower bulbs dug up, I packed them up in my car in big boxes and I drove them all the way to uh, the new house in the new yard and I began to plant them. I set out to plant them near the other daffodil uh, plantings that I made this year of newer daffodils, which is very exciting. I got some exciting new varieties coming next year for the daffodil tour. Uh, looking forward to that. but. Um, I just made big long trenches. I tilled out big long trenches. I dug out the trench with a shovel and then I carefully arranged them um, so that I could, you know, cover them up. And I did kind of this arched pattern. Uh, this is not really exactly where I would want to plant all the daffodils, but uh, like I said, I haven't been able to completely mow down the big yard yet because it's still a little bit big for my regular lawnmower to go through. I don't know what I'm going to do there. Hopefully everything will die back over the winter. But these daffodils ended up occupying an absolutely enormous space here in the yard. And I think if all goes well, which I don't see any reason why it shouldn't go well, uh, we're going to have absolutely a beautiful display. And uh, by we, I mean like us.
you and you and me I don't know <laughs> but I think it's gonna look really great if you have any questions on how to plant daffodils I have a video for that already I can put it in the cards if you want to check that out I think that's about it for this video hopefully you enjoyed it as always if you have any questions or comments or anything down below you can leave them there and I'll do my best to get back to you. I still haven't answered comments from the last video. I'm running a little bit behind, but hopefully I'll catch up soon. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. You helped me keep this little uh, donation garden going, and it really means a lot to me. So, so thank you so much. Uh, links to all the stuff is down below if you want to check it out. I hope that you are having an absolutely beautiful day. You 100% deserve it. I hope it's warm and sunny and everything's going really well. I will talk to y'all later. Bye!